good. Today's run, seven miles in the books, crushed it, I'm not gonna lie. Definitely a mental test, but it's what it's all about. Today's episode, we got a few things to talk about and we're gonna go get out to shoot. So I do have to give a major shout out to everyone who has ordered stickers on evanramp.com. Y'all are the truth. Yo, real quick, I'm gonna answer a question a lot of people have asked about in the comments. Why do I use the external keyboard and external trackpad on my MacBook Pro? Basically, two months ago, MacBook keyboard, the one right here, trackpad, stop working. Take this into Apple. I have Apple Care. They tell me it's gonna take like four or five days to send this laptop to Tennessee to get fixed. Now you guys know I use this laptop every single day to edit photos and videos. So five days without it, it's like kind of unheard of. I don't think I can make that happen. So instead of getting it fixed, I figured I'd just go ahead and use the external trackpad or this is the trackpad and the external keyboard and uh, it works completely fine. Not a big deal and eventually I'll just get a new MacBook but I don't want to right now and I also don't want to deal with the headache of not having this for five days. If it was like two days, I could probably make it work by using my desktop downstairs but it's just too much of a hassle. So Apple, you gotta figure out your repair process because it's a pain in the ass for basically every single thing. All right, quick stop at Pond City Market for lunch. Yo, it is a hot one today. Gray t-shirt might have been the worst idea ever, but because I've taken two weeks and only used the Fuji X-H1 on this channel, it's only right that today we bust out the Nikon D810 with this monstrosity of a lens. This is the camera we're gonna be shooting on today. And uh, still to this day, the biggest drawback of a DSLR versus a mirrorless crop sensor like the Fuji is just size. I mean, how ridiculous is this thing? All right, we just pulled up at this location. I'm gonna shoot all this on the GoPro just cause we got like a lot of camera action going on right now. There's a lot to keep up with and it'll just be easier that way. So here is the story behind today's photo. We're headed to Krog Street Tunnel, which is like a super famous tunnel here in Atlanta. It's got a bunch of graffiti. Basically anybody can go paint there if you want. It's like a graffiti practice facility. That's like a terrible way to put it, but that's kind of what it is. So I've made a couple photos here in the past and I've sold a few of them. One guy bought like a big canvas of one of the photos I made down here. So it's definitely a popular location. So about a month ago, I had someone else reach out and I didn't really have any left. I had a few, but I didn't like the quality of them because I just made them one day when I was around in a vlog like a year ago. I didn't have a tripod. So let's head down there. Let's make the photos. I'll voice over because it's going to be super loud in there and you won't be able to hear me. Yo, yo, coming in hot with that voiceover right now. So we're walking into the tunnel. How crazy is this thing? Completely covered in paint. I like this piece on the right side. It's got the incredible Hulk colors. A few years ago, they buffed this entire thing. It was all white and it was like refilled, I think in like two weeks. It was pretty crazy how fast it filled up. So this first photo right here, this is just kind of a warm up shot. Photography is just like sports. You gotta get a little warm up in, get yourself going. So I do a test photo here, kind of figure out what my settings are. Everything I'm gonna be shooting at F8 to get those nice tight corners. Here's the photo, a nice warm up, and now we're ready to go on this photo journey. So I'm walking down. I notice on the left side over here, there's just some really cool colors. I make this photo not for any particular reason other than it just looks cool to me. So made the shot. Here it is, looks solid. Not gonna do anything with it, but uh, it's cool. It's one for me to save. So right here, I'm gonna take another photo of the tunnel, but more of like a catty corner angle. So maybe I can get some light trails on this left side because there's some cars going through. I have to drop my speed a little bit because we're deeper in the tunnel, there's less light. And I'm checking for cars right here to see if there's gonna be one coming. I can get some light trails going through those cutouts on the left side. I end up making this photo right here. This is the one I like best with no light trails. Now this is an example of a photo I would potentially sell from this location. Now this is kind of a tricky spot because obviously people are painting their art down here, but also it's a public place that everyone knows. So as a photographer, you've got to have kind of a code of ethics, I would say, when it comes to something like this. I would never sell a photo that directly showcases someone else's piece of artwork. So coming up, I'll show you an example of that. But this right here, this is an example of something I would potentially sell on a canvas or at a print if someone reached out to me about it because it doesn't directly focus on someone else's piece. It just focuses on the tunnel as a whole. So all I'm saying is use good judgment as a photographer and never sell someone else's artwork when 
when it comes to street art, but if there's a location like this that's popular, just try your best to capture it as a whole instead of focusing on one piece of art. Yo, this right here was tragic. Check this out. The camera falls, basically just guillotines in my finger. That did not feel good whatsoever. So I'm walking down this tunnel again. I noticed this piece on the left. I really like the colors. The face looks really cool. I set up a shot similar to the last one, this time with the cars being more on the right side with more of the fence and the face being more of the focus. Now this is that example I'm talking about. This is a photo I would never sell because that art on the left side is not mine. It's a very clear focus point of the image, but I do really like how moody and eerie this shot looks. I made this one more for myself, if anything. This photo right here, this one I'm liking a lot. This came out crazy. So look at these colors. I'm adjusting my settings. I go with the lowest ISO possible. Once again, F8. And now we're doing one 1 1.6 of a second framing this composition up making sure this thing is absolutely perfect because i can tell how awesome this photo is going to be right away we're towards the back end of the tunnel so we have all this light coming in towards us which is why everything is so lit up the colors look great and i mean this shot is bananas i am liking this one a lot the colors are just crazy on this that reminds me of something like from new york now this other photo i tried i've tried this a few times and I just don't like it. It's, I don't know, there's just not enough going on facing this direction. So I make one photo, there's a few little light trails in there, but I kind of back off from it and I try another one that was 30 seconds. It doesn't work. But then I tried this photo down here and I had this idea for a while. Basically, I was trying to make a three layer image. So I have the fence, we have the cars, and then we have this piece in the back. So I frame the piece inside the fence. I get my settings right, which you could see right there. It's like F13, uh, 113 of a second, and then low ISO, I'm waiting for a car, take a shot right here, and bang, I catch some light trails in the perfect spot. This photo came out crazy. I was hyped about it. I used F13 so that more would be in focus. That piece is kind of in focus in the background. Look at how crazy that came out. You can see the light trails going through. They end at the perfect spot, which was a little bit of skill and a little bit of luck on my part. That light trail lines up with the fence perfectly, and then we have the art piece, the face back there, right through the fence. Definitely, definitely liking how this one came out. And then this is one more photo I made off camera. It's just another straight down the tunnel, but I really like the tones and this came out really good. This was a fun day of photography for me. I could have been down here for probably two hours if I wanted. Very happy with how today's shoot came out. You know, I was thinking about something today and I wanna pass this along to you guys because I think it's important. A lot of you get onto me because I never really say that I like my photos. I'm like, eh, these are okay. Even though there are plenty of episodes where I do really like the photos, today being one of them, it's important to not get comfortable. It happens to everybody when you find success, when things start going good, you get comfortable and you gotta shake that off. That's one reason why I never allow myself to really get too consumed with what I'm making, too happy with what I'm making. Obviously, I know the photos are pretty decent most of the time, and when I look back to two years ago versus the photos that I'm making now, I'm shitting on those photos from two years ago. I'm so much better now, but it's not something I need to always be reminding myself of. You can't get too comfortable even when you're excelling, always push yourself to go to the next level, especially with something like art and photography. There is a lot, a lot of levels. When you look at the people who are great, they're on level like, I don't know, 10,000. We're gonna see there's 10,000 levels. I might be on level 500, maybe a thousand, maybe, maybe a couple thousand, I don't really know. But the point being, there are a lot of levels to this game and you just gotta remind yourself of that and that's why I rarely you know, boast about what I'm doing, you know? There's always room for improvement. 